a good screenshot there. There's a ton of fish. Yep, there we go, right there. Bam. Just like that. Just like that. There's a big school down there. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another sonar video. Today, we are gonna be talking about how I use side imaging. I'm gonna walk through some of the settings that I use, and then we're gonna find some crappie. This time of year, we're in mid-July. These crappie are gonna be set up specifically on a lot of our lakes up north, 15 to 22 feet, um, either on the deeper weed edges, or if you got brush piles, which this lake does have. Actually, in a previous video, I called them brush piles. They are technically called cribs just because they are basically, they look like a child's crib, the way they stack the logs on four corners, or they look like a, a Lincoln log cabin without the top on it. Um, but for everybody's sake, I'm just gonna call them brush piles for simplicity. We're gonna be using our side imaging to find which set of cribs or brush piles has the most fish. We're gonna be throwing out a buoy, and then we're gonna be vertically jigging these fish, maybe using a bobber, depending if we can get right over the top of them or not. But let's run and find a school of fish and I'll show you how I use my side imaging to pick out the best brush piles and the best weed edges. All right, now I have some brush piles marked here on a, a deeper point that sticks out. And if you're ever looking for where you should be idling over with side imaging, down imaging, 2D sonar, to find either brush piles or deeper weed edges, uh, look for where the contours stack up fairly tight and then try either the inside edge or the outside edge of this. I know I got tracks all over the place, but the contours sweep out and around like this. And there's brush piles actually right on top of this little point here. But if I didn't know anything about this lake, I would simply idle around where these contours are stacked tight, see how they kind of fade and get flatter. That means it's more of a gradual slope right through here. Then it gets tighter again right on the point, and then it goes back to a gradual slope on that side. I would simply idle around this uh, with side imaging or down imaging to see if I can find some brush piles. So that's that's how I would find them. Now, let's talk about side imaging. I'm over the top of a big rock pile right now. These are a bunch of boulders. There's actually a brush pile right here, but we're moving pretty slow. Um, so first thing about side imaging, let's talk about just quick settings. Contrast, uh, you can set to, I, I found that actually lowering the contrast on side imaging is a little more helpful to find some definition for me. So I like it a little bit lower than 50. There's actually fish popping up right here on our screen. I'll, uh, let's do a little screenshot for you. So you actually see a little bit better of a picture. But I like the contrast a little bit lower than 50. Uh, you can play around with it. The uh, brightness, again, same with the down imaging setup. I like the auto low function. I like it pretty bright. When you're fishing for smaller fish like panfish, I like that. This is this is like your gain. For other sonar units, this is your gain, your brightness. I like it up a lot higher than what you normally would if you're looking for bass or walleye. Now, this is probably the one of the most important setups that I see a lot of people who try to use side imaging. This is what they mess up. When I'm using side imaging, right now you can see I have it on 40 feet left and right of the boat. I've seen guys that fish for walleye or bass, they probably go all the way out to maybe 70 feet or so, and they'll feel pretty comfortable with that. You can actually see those schools of those bigger fish. And if I'm looking for uh, pieces of cover, like brush piles, I might go all the way out to 70 feet left and right. But if I'm actually trying to determine if a weed line or a brush pile actually has crappie on it, I'm gonna bring this all the way back down to about 40 feet left and right. 40 to 50 feet left and right, that's where I think this is probably the best um, and it doesn't matter what sonar unit you have, whether it's a Garmin, Humminbird, Lowrance, I like running 40 feet left and right. And here's why, I got fish coming up right here. These are bait fish actually. I don't think those are crappie. This, this rock pile drops off, there's a school of bait fish of some kind right there. Now, let's quick talk about frequency because this is the Garmin 93SV UHD. So you see the frequency here, I have it on this is 1.12 megahertz. It says 1120 kilohertz. Now there's two options. Typically on most sonar units, there's three options. Uh, there's a 455, an 800, and a one point something mega. So if, if this is your boat, you're, you're cruising straight to the camera here. The 455 is your widest angle of side imaging. Okay, this is kind of like I talked about when it came to 2D sonar. Your uh, lowest frequency Typically on 2D sonars, there's two of them because most older models are dual beam. There's 83 kilohertz and 200 kilohertz. Your 83 is your widest cone angle on your 2D sonar. Your 200 is a narrow cone angle. 
Same concept with your side imaging. Your 455 is your widest angle for your side imaging. A lot of people run these new mega imaging units or Ultra HD in, in, in terms of Garmin here. And that's because what it does is it's got a little bit narrower of a cone, so it's only taking in a certain amount of data. And because of that, because of the higher frequency and because it's got a limited, or it, it takes in less data, it can give you a crisper picture. So the 455, let's say is right here, here's your boat. It's going out like this. Your 800, is a, 800 kilohertz is a little bit more narrow. And then your mega imaging, your 1.12 or 1.2, it's a little more narrow. The mega imaging is a smaller, I guess, cone angle. It's not really a cone, but the smaller area that it's covering in terms of water. And it's trying to take in less data, therefore it can give you a crisper picture on your unit. So that's what I want you to understand from frequency standpoint. I'm going to run the 1.12 megahertz Ultra HD that this Garmin 93 SV has. Um, I like running it. It gives a really cl crisp, clear image. The Hummingbirds, if you have a Hummingbird or a Lowrance, that 1.1 or 1.2 megahertz frequency, it's gonna give you a really crisp image. All right, one more thing I just, I'll show you here. Uh, when you go to sonar setup, there's this thing called range lines. I know people a lot talk about, hey, how far, whoops, wrong button. Range lines, I'm gonna turn that back on. How far away from the boat is a certain object? Now this shows you on the bottom of the screen here, it's got the numbers and then it has the lines showing you roughly uh, how far away from the boat. It's not exactly 25 feet. There's a certain angle, uh, mathematical, equation that it's actually not quite 25 feet away, but it gives you a ballpark estimate of where an object, or like in this case, some rocks, you got some bigger rocks down here. I'm sure there's some smallmouth and some walleye off the edges of these things. Gives you an, I guess, an idea of where certain objects are uh, relative to your boat. Um, real quick, this is your boat. This is your transducer. I'm not moving very fast right now. I'm just drifting about half mile an hour, but your boat's up here. Your transducer, this is to the port side your left, starboard to your right, and everything going down, that is historical data. So all of this stuff I've already gone over uh, with my boat, I've already drifted over. There's a school of something right there, right there. That could be panfish, could be some bait fish, most likely some bait fish, They're, they look pretty small. Oh, there, there we go, cool little image there. I hope you can see that right there, whoa. Oh, here's a better one, right there. Right there, you see that little that little line? I'm gonna screenshot that for you. There's a fish down there, that's a bigger fish. That's, that could be a walleye, a bass, musky, northern, something, uh, right off the edge. But uh, that gives, that tells me it's about 25 feet to the right of my boat. So, another cool little, little function on these units. And the last thing, if you go to your menu setup and go to sonar setup, kind of the last thing I want to talk about, and I talked about it in the 2D sonar and the down imaging, that's the color scheme here. I like running the orange crawfish pattern. Um, this is very similar to what the hummingbirds were. And I, this was the first hummingbird that I bought like four years ago. I'm used to this kind of color pattern. It's that gold and black pattern, but you can choose whatever you'd like. A lot of guys run this blue pattern or even this green one. Um, so you guys, you can pick what you think is best and shows up the best. But let's go back to uh, finding some brush piles here. All right, here we go. So it looks like I'm slowly going over top of, let's just bring that back down a bit. There's some brush piles right here. And I'm going to go, once I see something that I like on my side imaging, like right here, there's some fish. I'll screenshot that for you. Once I see something I like on my side imaging, there's a couple things you can do. You can throw down a waypoint or you can just slam it in reverse and go back over it with either your 2D or your down imaging. And once I go back right over the top of it, which means it's going to show up right here, I'm going to throw a buoy out right on top of it so once it starts showing up and I get right over the top of it again I'm just gonna throw that buoy out and then we'll hop on a trolling motor and start vertically jigging or casting towards it oh there it is right there 
there's the brush pile. I'm gonna throw the buoy out and there's some fish on top of it. Yep, there we go, right there. Bam. That's a good screenshot there. There's a ton of fish. Now, if you notice, those fish are kind of elongated. That's because we're not moving very fast. Same thing with the 2D sonar and the down imaging. When you're not moving that fast, all that deep, that signal's doing is pinging off the same fish back and forth with that transducer. And it's gonna kind of create that straight line. Going, the, going with the 6.6 ACC crappie sticks rod. And uh, I don't know if you guys saw the email that came out today from ACC crappie sticks, but they, uh, along with pretty much every other fishing company in the industry, had some supply chain problems of getting, the rods were in the US, but apparently they were stuck between the, the ports and uh, Illinois where ACC crappie sticks is located. But I guess August 1st, they're gonna be, they're gonna be ready to go. They'll have stock of, I think pretty much everything and ready to ship. So August 1st, that's when you can go back on the website order yourself some rods. This is the PC Fun Viper X 1000 size reel. This is six pound monofilament, one with the eighth ounce ACC jig. And then this is the Crappie Monster Curly Tail. A little pink action going on. And these fish are stacked all over these brush piles. There's like two or three brush piles here. I threw that, that uh, buoy out and I actually just looked over with the side imaging and you can see the motor's turning. It's a little difficult when you got it on spot lock to kind of see everything, but, but there's fish stacked between like three or four different brush piles. So I'm just gonna kind of cast this thing out and uh, hopefully they're hungry. It just rained. Like it just got done raining about 20 minutes ago. So we'll see how active these fish are. I cannot stress enough, if you're looking for a brand new sonar unit, um, even if you're looking for a used one on Facebook or Craigslist, get something with side imaging. It's going to help you so much in terms of just finding these fish. If you're fishing a new lake, fishing a lake that you know has deep weed edges or brush piles that hold fish consistently, just being able to look left and right of the boat compared to your down imaging or your 2D sonar, um, to me it's invaluable. So if you're going to if you're going to spend money, spend it on a unit that is that has capabilities of side imaging. There's one. There we go. Fish number one. I don't think he's that big. Nope. It's a little guy. It's like a five incher right there. See you, buddy. Well, if he's hungry enough to eat this thing, I'm sure there's some bigger crappie that are nine to 10 inches in there. Good eater size fish. I'm wondering should I keep some tonight? Oh, there he is. Wow, hit it on the drop. Ooh, is this a crappie? This is a crappie, this is a good one. Or I hooked him funny. I hooked him funny, I think. Oh, no. It's a better one, this would be a quality eater. Notice how he, he got bit on the bottom lip. It's because he hit it on the fall. When they're reeling it in, or when you're reeling it in, they're gonna get hooked on the top of the lip, but on the bottom, usually that means they, they dove down to it. That'd be a quality eater fish. It's probably about a nine incher. The trick when you're casting out, usually just watch the line. Probably should have high vis on when I'm casting like this, so I can see the line shoot out. Otherwise the bite's just gonna feel, it's not gonna feel like a thump most of the times. You're just gonna kind of pull back on it and it's just gonna feel like dead weight. And then I'll start fighting. Just like that. Just like that. There's a big school down there. Oh yeah. These would be some decent eaters. See you buddy. So I guess the the two or three biggest takeaways for side, side imaging, get comfortable with a palette that you like. I like this orange crawfish pattern. It's very similar to what a hummingbird uses. And scr shrink that screen. I know I talk about shrinking that screen with 2D sonar and down imaging to make sure you're only viewing about 30 feet down. 
we'll shrink that screen. I got this, this one's at 50 feet left and right, but normally I run 40 to 50 feet left and right if I'm looking for fish. If you're looking for brush piles, go ahead, expand it out to 70, 80 feet, because you're not really looking for fish. You're just looking for something that you can maybe scan over in a, in a much closer window, or maybe with down imaging or something. There he is. There we go. That guy smacked it. Oh, dang it. I'm trying to catch one more to end it here, and that guy, dang it. That was a decent crappie too. That's probably about a 10 inch fish, which for this lake is actually pretty decent. Let's see if we can get one more here. The key is to let it drop all the way down there. I'm in about 20, 20 feet of water. These fish are anywhere from six feet below the surface to three, four feet above them, above the bottom. There's a tap. Come on, dude. Smack it. Oh, man. They're right there. There he is. Got him that time. I don't think this is a big fish. Man, they are feisty, though. That'd be a decent eater, I think. But that's going to wrap it up. Go ahead, head out on the water this weekend or sometime this week. Try out these little tactics for side imaging. Those are my settings. Go find yourself some crappie, have yourself a fish fry. So appreciate you watching. If you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram, uh, anything, whether it's 2D sonar, down imaging, side imaging, GPS, maybe you're looking at a new sonar unit, feel free to message me. Um, at Facebook or Instagram. Always appreciate hearing from you. I'm gonna try to catch a limit here and fry them up for dinner tonight. So I appreciate you watching. We'll see ya.